Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. This is NTV Weekend Edition. Now, a government proposal to allow 15-year-old girls to access contraceptives to reduce levels of teenage or adolescent pregnancy caused huge debate this week. Now, in Parliament, Health State Minister Margaret Mohanga argued that it was not yet a policy but was merely at proposal stage. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown in 2020 and 2021, hundreds of girls went the family way as schools were shut. There was also disruption of programs related to access to sexual reproductive health information. Now in studio to discuss this matter of access to contraceptives for the younger population is Priscilla Nabatanzi, a project coordinator at Reproductive Health Uganda. Good evening Priscilla and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much Mildred. I'm blessed to be at NTV to speak about access on contraceptives with the adolescents. You had the debate. Yes, I did. What is your take? Um, I, I, I'm going to speak in a, a diff, um, in like three versions. And I would first of all begin by saying I'm also a parent right now. I'm a mother of two, one of which is a girl and currently she's four. And I always say that uh, no mother or no parent would actually want to give contraceptives to their child. Mm. But the reality hits us differently. So if we have diversities of young people, and we all know that the young people that grow up in Sunday school, those are the children that we keep taking to church and raising, you know, in a godly way. And then we also have young people whose mothers carry them to the street because that's why they have to do like business. Mom is doing business on the street. So they take along their child because they do not even have anyone else to actually take care of their child. Then we also have the young girls that have actually gone into work they're working as housekeepers, housemaids at the age of 10, 11, 12, up to like 17 or 19 and even beyond, but we are going to concentrate on majorly the adolescents. Then we also have uh, young people who are refugees, who are displaced from their own countries. So with all that diversity between young people, we as Reproductive Health Uganda, we think making uh, or creating favorable spaces, favorable health facilities, favorable policies that can help the young people access services and the services to this note that we're speaking about is the family planning. Can every girl have an option? And yes, people want to also speak about the condoms, but condoms come in as a second option. As a girl, I might have a female condom, but it might be very hard for me to actually access those condoms because they're very, um, they are very unavailable on the market, unlike the male condoms. So you realize that people speaking about access to condoms or having them take condoms, you're speaking to the boy child who is not the victim here because but they are the perpetrators. They are the perpetrators, but I mean, I am the girl who is supposed to carry this pregnancy that I'm actually not prepared for mentally, physically, in all aspects. I am not prepared to be a mother at 15 years. So are you saying that it is okay for the 15-year-old girls to be given contraceptives? I, I am going to say that at Reproductive Health Uganda, we run 19 clinics in different regions of this country. And for us, we also follow the human rights best approach in offering the services that we offer, reproductive health services, but also the general health care services. And with those, we treat every client as they come. Individually, we assess the client, we take their history, and even if it's a 15-year-old seeking a contraception, we shall take their history, get to us why do they want to actually use the contraceptives? What are the underlying factors or underlying reasons that are pushing them to use to come for family planning? So, so they're actually teenagers that come for these uh, contraceptive services? Yes. I think uh, looking at the DHS data, but also the data we have at Reproductive Health Uganda, and even the data from the public health facilities of this country have ages between 10 sometimes even nine up to 17 getting family planning methods like implants, injectables, but also majorly those are some of the young people that have actually dropped out of school. We also look at uh, the young people who have had a pregnancy, an early pregnancy, 
but what other second option do we have to give them as reproductive health or as uh, gatekeepers out there or even the government because at that level the Ministry of Education says it's okay you've gotten pregnant you're free to go back to school but then it doesn't mean that that person is not going to be sexually active anymore mm. so what options do we have for such young people several of them have also done abortions what options do we have for them do we still want them to do those abortions or to give birth to more children creating a bigger burden and therefore we can even never achieve the economic dividends and the other developmental issues that we talk about you know as reproductive health uganda and also uh we understand that you have worked on different projects that aim at mm -hmm. you know mitigating teenage pregnancies how bad is the problem from where you sit of teenage pregnancies in the country I think I'm going to uh, first of all begin with some of the districts currently that we are uh, having programs with. We have uh, that we lead program in districts like Amuru and while we were there I think three weeks ago um, the maternal health, um, she's the senior maternal uh, deputy like DHO who noted that there are adolescent I mean teenage pregnancy rates are way up to 22 and recently looking at the new data that came out of the UD, I mean the the United Nations population plan no 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 the Ugandan one mm. showed that it's actually at 24 I mean at at yes 24 24 percent 24 24 percent uh, which is also close to the Ugandan uh, data that we have currently as a country so you realize that there are other districts whose data is actually overarching the national data or sometimes just slightly below mm. the national data we also have power to youth program which is implemented in five districts of this country District districts like Kalangala which also are very unique because those are districts it's a district at an island where people do a lot of fishing but also do a lot of work in the palm oil plantations so the exposure to things that are interrupting their stay in school are quite a number because today also young people want to have money but also the facilities are sometimes far away from where they reside so you realize that a young person who needs a service may not fail to actually move beyond where they stay to look for that health service mm. so sometimes we also look at or focus on the issues of how do we bring these services closer to the young people so we also need to nurture the bit of uh, uh, having health uh, services move out from the facilities to like the communities and see how to ensure that young people are able to access these services well much as the the the, the uh, emphasis has been put on teenage pregnancy on mm -hmm. curbing teenage pregnancy yeah. I, I'm thinking we are missing a certain point here of yeah. other dangers that could actually come from engaging in early sex and this is HIV that's right mm. Uh, I think before I even speak to the HIV, I would want to first of all look up up to the screen and tell everyone out there that before we look at teenage pregnancy, just know that young girl or that young woman has actually either been raped or defiled or it has actually been by a person they actually know, an ancestor, a dad, an uncle, or an auntie, people that are close. Yes, they've been manipulated by the people they know. It could be this border guy that keeps taking this young girl to school and this time around they actually take advantage of them. So as we condone the teenage pregnancy, we also need to factor in the bit of sexual abuse that never goes unreported. Then the bit of the HIV that you're speaking about. Young people have actually gotten HIV. And I think we have had stories where somebody goes just for this one day this one night and there is that urge of I need to try out doing these things and at the end of the day that one night stand gets them HIV gets them the pregnancy alongside other sexually transmitted infections that may not be tested at the moment but maybe the signs and symptoms present later and those are also going along with the HIV and that becomes a serious issue for young people and for us we are saying a condom could also be another option in that regard to actually curb down the HIV rates however information is the best mm. if we can offer 
information to the young people let it be age appropriate information how much knowledge are you going to share with a four-year-old girl or boy how much information are you sharing with a teenager who is becoming a topic of the nation today how much are you sharing with someone who is joining university and even who is already at university we've had engagements with university students on the world contraception day and most of them shared their dissatisfaction with the different caretakers behind them where they have to they noted that if we had gotten some of this information before we wouldn't have messed up ourselves because some of them were speaking from experiences where they've had uh, abortions that sometimes ended up into losing their lives mm. sometimes some of them have actually taken on the methods because one of them i remember noted that some of you are calling yourselves first wives <laughs> forgetting that there is another wife out there and then for you still calling yourself a first wife so she urged to mm. the others to actually use condoms just other than going plainly like that yeah you talked of caretakers and uh, he, uh, here i get the sense that the parents also come in yes. they also play a big role in actually sharing some of this sex education or information yes. to their children we actually don't call it sex education because this country uh, a number of people miss would actually miss caught you on that and think that you're going to specifically speak about sex um, so for us we call it sexuality education and we are happy that the ministry of uh, education finally uh, launched through the first lady 2018 they launched the national sexuality education framework which stipulates everything that is supposed to be given to the different young people age appropriate information from age three so you can imagine the parents out there who are thinking that i need to wait until my daughter is 15 mm. to actually speak to them i think you're lagging behind you need so to start, start as early as three years a child three needs years to can, know. can comprehend yes. sexuality education yes because sexuality does not mean for example the sex people think about it looks at the time of your growth who are you as for example priscilla i am a female and uh these are my different body parts that mm. is some of the information that a child needs to know at that i was level. about to ask what exactly do you say to a three-year-old about that's sexuality. what they actually teach them in kindergarten they need to know their different body parts and their functions no 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 they stop at naming them and also know that the bit of cleaning them then the bit of who is supposed to touch you and who is not supposed to touch you because we've seen and i think ntv has equally documented stories where uncles have said do this because they're telling a three-year-old and they gave her a sweet and uncle told me to remove my knicker and do this so for us we are saying uncle should never tell you that and even if they do that you say no mommy said i'm not supposed to do that with you so that is the sexuality education that we want everyone out there to actually comprehend not looking at the smaller aspects of it sex the sex bits come late and much later, later on. yes now looking at the controversy that is actually rotating this uh discussion mm. is the fact that allowing the girls uh, the 15 year olds and uh, the adolescents to access contraceptives is sort of giving them a leeway to actually go and engage in sexual activities i think for me that is not right and even where we stand at rh we think that is not right because uh by if the government says yeah i mean it puts a policy that says let's have contraceptives for young people are from the age of 15 we shouldn't forget that at 15 somebody can actually conceive we shouldn't forget that Uganda's sexual debut for the girls is around 16 and 15 and 16 is almost you know very close and then for the boys is also around 17 so you realize that a girl actually grows up earlier or grows very fast as compared to to the girl so first we are saying contraceptives being given to these people will not mean that they are going to be taken to schools they are going to be in the market on the streets being sold and people are being called on to like buy the way people stop and say can i have pk here no it will be 
this young girl that will actually need the service that will actually work because they know it's okay for me to actually access this particular method to ensure that I become a better person or I stay in school and become a better person so we all, all of us want the abstinence but how about the young people that have failed to abstain not because they actually want but because they live with the abusers We've seen stories where girls have actually been abused by their own fathers. Would you want to give birth to your own fathers? How would your you? Your sister, your siblings. I don't even know if that would be your sister. I mean, it doesn't sound nice. It doesn't feel good. And for us in Uganda, based on our culture, it, it, I mean, it's not the best. So, and we are saying mm. that shouldn't happen. Give me the information. Let me know it. Giving somebody information doesn't mean they're actually going to uh, go and, and have sex. I got the information I didn't engage into sex until I was you know mm. at, at university and mm. even when I was uni at university I was very calculative to say mm -mm, I don't want to be my mother's bad girl okay clearly from what you have stated uh, abstinence alone cannot actually help to cannot be that solution to mm. uh, teenage pregnancies what more as we get to wrap up this conversation what more needs to be done to see that teenage pregnancies or adolescent pregnancies is actually curbed uh, for me, I would love to say that if we need to curb teenage pregnancy for this country, we need to allow the contraceptives for these young people and let us give them information. Let them know that the information is, is, is there. Let them know that the service is actually there. Let them know that they're not going to be judged or stigmatized for only protecting themselves from plans that they are not ready for. Thank you, Priscilla Nabatanzi, for making time to speak to us. She is a project coordinator at Reproductive Health Uganda. And with that, we take a short break and return with news from the world of sport.